by the blow I gotta stay on my hustle, you know that I'm grinding for sure I came out right from the bottom, now they see me chasing my goals Now they see me on the go, yeah. now they see me on the road It's time to hustle, yeah, it's time to grow I'ma shoot for the stars and we ain't for the gold It's time to hustle, yeah, it's time to grow Yo, what's up? Welcome back to Hustlers. Um, got my bro Jordan Ricky on today. What's up, Bala? Joe Bala, Joe Bala. Happy to be here. Thanks for jumping on, G. Um, how's things over your way? No, all good, eh? Um, bro, just just the whole whole COVID buzz just coming back again, eh? It's been it's been like a roller coaster, bro. We, I thought it was going away and everything was coming sweet, and then that second wave hit, and bro, it's just it's just gone out of control and now it's gone back home too. So can't so believe it, eh, to be all honest. The, all the boys are um out your way now, eh? In the comp? Yeah, bro. Yeah, they're there in Queensland. So there's the thing there's like the, all the teams are here in Queensland. So there's about four teams in Sunshine Coast, um, three in Brisbane, and I think there's another four in, in Goldie. And yeah, they're just staying at like hotels and resorts and stuff like that. So it must be hard for them, but um, I think all their families are up here now, but yeah, no, nah, it would be pretty hard not being at home and being in your own environment. So, yeah. I guess that's low-key all good for you then, that you get to sort of stick around home, G. Yeah, bro. Yeah, it's mean. It's mean. Yeah, I love being home, mate. Eh? sort of hate staying at hotels and stuff like that, like having my own bed and that before a game. So it's been good. Yeah, go on. Um, G, I'll just make a quick shout-out to the uh, sponsor, uh, Keep the Change. Um, it's a new sponsor that's jumped on board. Um, bro, you actually like it, G. I reckon you should subscribe up to it, bro. It's like a... He, he does this thing called money mail, which is like an email that he sends out every Friday. So it's just what we were just talking about before. Um, just about yeah. how to deal with your money, bro. He's a real like top dog accountant, but he's a good ass count. Like he, he runs like a, um, into horse racing and shit. Like he's just like, he's a good ass fella. And he's, and he's doing this free email, bro. He sends out every Friday. You sign up to it. Just teaches you how to spend your, like how to look after your money and certain things that you wouldn't know about your money. And, um, Definitely recommend jumping on it, G, and anyone else, just click on the link in the description um, and jump on it and start learning how to look after our money, bro, because I don't know about you, but when I, was a, when I was a kid and still sort of until now, almost taught not to talk about money, yeah, like it's disrespectful. Yeah, 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 in front of people, yeah, especially. Yeah, yeah. so just sort of um, normalising it a little bit and so important, bro, so. Um, mm. Anyway, bro, how, how's the... How's the morale, G, with the, obviously the, are the boys have still got a crack or what? At, at top eight, our team? Yeah. Nah, bro, so like, it's, uh, bro, fuck, uh, where do I start, bro? The last, the last two years, bro, have been like, fuck, crazy, eh? Just, just because we're a young team, bro, and like, we sort of lost all of our gun players, bro, um, all in one. Like, you know, like you had, we have like, you know, like the Darren Lockyers, the Matt Gillettes and the Sam Fridays, like, bro, they all came through at the same age and um, same grade and stuff like that. And, you know, they all retired around the same, same area, um, you know, era. So mm. it was pretty tough, eh? Like we got a new crop of, of young boys, like including myself coming through. Mm. And um, obviously it's a bit hard. And I reckon like NRL is probably one of the hardest competitions in the world just from how many rounds there are and the physicality and the speed of it. So it's just like getting used to that and, um, you know, sort of learning a bit of resilience as well. And um, yeah, but, you know, I, I do feel like we're on the rise and, and you know, these, these past two years have been difficult for us, but, um, you know, I, I do feel like we're, we're starting to change and when getting some good wins and some close games um, under our belt this year. So yeah, it's all about learning and, and just talking to the right people. So, yeah. So you're talking about big losses, like um, obviously Alex Glenn, bro, he just, just announced his retirement. Um, yeah, bro, yeah. It must have had a big, a big impact on you, especially being Kiwi boys. and um, Yeah. Yeah, bro. He, um, when I first started, like coming to the NRL squad, um, you know, me being a second row and obviously a Kiwi boy as well, he, he took me under his wing straight away. And, you know, I sort of looked to him as like my bigger brother and, um, you know, he, he sort of took me in and, and took me into his family because I moved over here, you know, by myself. Um, all my whanau looked back home. So, um, yeah, he took me in and, you know, he brought me over for family dinners and just really included me. So okay. when he announced his retirement, it was, um, yeah, it was tough, eh? It was really hard for me to sort of, um, like, I always knew it was going to come. Um, but, you know, when he 
um, you know, sort of sat us down and told us, like, it just, it just hit me like a ton of bricks, bro. It was sort of like, like losing my brother, like, you know, you know what I mean? But, but not really. So, um, yeah, it was tough. And, you know, I had a good chat with him after when he, when he told us and he was sort of like to me, you know, bro, like, you know, like just because I'm not in the team anymore, doesn't mean I won't be here to support you on, um, like obviously not on the field, but you know, but behind the scenes, like if you're struggling with anything and stuff like that, like oh, I'll never leave you, bro. So that was cool to hear. And yeah, it was just really tough to to lose him. But um, you know, he brings a lot of good energy and morale around the team and um good wisdom as well. So it'll be interesting to see how we go next year. But you know, we're getting some good key signings next year as well. So um it'll be cool to see what they can bring uh to our team. So yeah. How did he um how do you tell the boys, Chief? Like, I haven't heard a bad word about Alex Glenn, eh? Like, every, every person bro, is a good Honestly, team. bro, like, the nicest dude. Like, you know how you sort of, like, you sort of envy those dudes because you're just like, bro, he is the man. Like, you you like, you like honestly talk about, um, you meet people that have met Alex Glenn or, you know, sort of had little bits to do with him and they just say, bro, he is just the nicest guy. Like, you can't, there's just nothing, nothing wrong about him. And, yeah. um. I think that's just like who he is and how he was brought up. But I, and like, you know, that, that's, that can be um, taken one way or the other also as well. So, bro, I just think he's the man. And um, yeah, it was, it was tough when he told us cause we weren't really expecting it, bro. And I thought it was pretty, it was pretty dumb like now. Cause like, you know, everyone's got social media and phones. So it came out the day before he told us. Oh shit. I was just going to yeah, ask how bro, to like, it was all over bloody um like Fox League and stuff like that. And he was he was off it too. Like I remember he was like telling us, he's like, look, boys, I know like some of you may have seen and stuff like that. And we're, and he's like, look, I didn't want it to go this way because the media got onto it. And right, he st- still doesn't know how like the media got onto it, eh? But like, I don't know how they- It's did. annoying. Bro, it's it's honestly, it's out of it. Like, I don't know if you've seen just recently how- um. They saying that Payne has signed a six year deal, <laughs> but oh, like it's it. not even it's not even true. Like, <laughs> oh, I, I know, bro. Like, I don't understand. Bro. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. So, media just, bro. They like they're full on over here, bro. Like, I reckon they're a lot more chill back in New Zealand, but over here, like, they would just attack you if you do like you know one little step out of place, and then they'll do some background digging as well, try to find stuff about. See, that's how you're raised or where you're from, bro. It's fucked. Yeah, it's fucked. Uh, I like obviously follow a bit of um, ice in that as well. And um, yeah. all the boys talking about how bad the negative media is now, bro. Like, fuck. Literally, bro. like everyone is trying to find the worst thing they possibly can for a hot, for like a um, title, bro. Like, it's just stupid. Bro, it's it's the, like the, um, did you see the Corey Norman stuff? Yeah, bro. I did. Oh. Yeah. That is so bad, bro. And then, like, they're out here, like, saying, oh, you know, we care about mental health and all this sort of stuff. And I was like, bro, you're just shitting on him. Like, yeah, that's bullshit. You can't, you can't go about, oh, yeah, you know, mental health, you need to talk about this and that. And then you got no problem doing a post about, oh, man, this guy played like shit. He lost a game for the team. You know, they're not going to make top eight now because of this guy. It's like, bro, come on. Like, Corey getting yeah. roasted, today. Eh? Like, what the? Yeah, f- like, yeah, he's already copping it from, you know, probably himself, you know, like, like I've met Normie, bro. He's he's a nice guy, and like you know, he's one of the boys to me. And um, you know, like a lot of people, you know, judge him just because, like, without having even even met him. So yeah. it's just shit, bro. And and Normie's a good dude, bro. Like you know, he's he's a crack up laugh, and you know, all those boys are actually all those YKTR boys. They're a good laugh, and yeah. they're they're good to get on the drink with as well, actually. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, like they're just top dudes, bro. And I just think like stuff like that by shitting on people without even knowing them or you know doing it behind a keyboard and a phone bro i just i just think that's weak but yeah 100 percent. i two things i hate as well is when someone does it off a fake account or if a, oh, if a okay. um, journalist posts something with no name to the title okay. yeah 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 it just does my head in bro it just i just hate it i hate it i'd rather just like i get it bro they're doing it for like publicity and getting this story out there and you know it's just there's like better they, ways, bro. there's better ways and like you know mm-hmm. that's that's essentially what i'm trying to do as well and what heaps of boys are trying to do is like break that stigma um play straight to fan let the boys say their thing most important thing to me as well is that like people like you like feel safe on this that you just chat 
and say whatever the yeah. fuck you want to say. And then if there's shit that you don't want put out, I cut it out. And as simple as that, you know, like. Yeah, um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, anyway, enough about everyone else, bro. Let's talk about you. Um, yeah, let's throw it back. So you're obviously a Kiwi boy. Let's go back to the the start where you were brought up and school schooling and stuff like that. Yeah, so um, uh, so most of my family, so I'm a Raglan boy, so I'm from Raglan, oh. um, like, the, yeah, 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 Whangaroa region, so uh, Raglan boy, Tainui boy, um, you know, uh, most of my family are all there, um, my kuro's got a um, big block of land out there in Raglan too, so our marae and, and um, our maunga and all that are all out there, so um, I love Raglan, eh, it's like a, it's like, like a little, little, heaven on earth for me i guess i haven't been there in a while just because of covid and you know other things that's been going on but every time i go to raglan it's just special man and i love it eh? and um um yeah it's just it's just yeah. home to me and my second home oh what's that sorry you surf no oh <laughs> bro I, I try eh? like i honestly give it a go but um i'm all right on a on um those big foam boards like they're <laughs> yeah, yeah. all right on them bro like i i, I go all right on them and but I can't shred a eh, like some of the people on those <laughs> eh, small surfboards, bro, and they just go hard, eh? And um, I'm just sitting there going far, eh? especially uh, and um, you know, down in Goldie and uh, Sunshine Coast as well, bro. Like, there's some people that I've just like you can just sit there and watch, and they just absolutely rip it up. And I've been out surfing like both ways, and you know, I just borrow a big massive foamy, and people just look at me <laughs> going, bro, this dude. <laughs> but I just, I just give it a crack, eh? I just give it a crack. You know Kihu? Yeah. Kihu. Butler? I know the, but are they Raglan like based? Yeah, they're not, they're not, oh, he's, nah, I don't think he's Raglan based, but he's in Goldie, bro. Um, He's a young Māori fella, he's um surfer, gun surfer, bro. I'll send you a link to him, Jay. Good, yeah, good hard, get to meet up with, bro. He's. I'll have to link up with the bro, teach me a couple. <laughs> hard, Jay. Uh, uh, yeah. You're, you're from Raglan? Yeah, yeah, so, so Raglan and, um, so I moved down to Christchurch when, like, I was still pretty recently young, about real young, actually, about two, three years old. So I was down there and um, been down in, um, in Christchurch. And so I moved down to Christchurch, sorry, when I was real young. Um, my my grandparents, so my kuro and my nanny, they, um, they bought a pub <laughs> out in Sheffield. So they owned that for uh, most of my childhood, like, ages. Um, so they, they were down there and um, they were – um you know looking after that pub and it was just like sort of like a um it was a pub bro but it was like a family family pub as well if you know what I mean like it was one of those old school pubs where all the, it was a pub downstairs but then upstairs was like you know like an actual house like oh, yeah like house and rooms and all that sort of stuff so they lived at the pub so like then and then out the back was the kitchen and all that, bro. So we used to have Christmas and stuff like that out there and massive family functions. So it was mean and oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like um, Sheffield's like sort of like country land, bro. So um, like out the back was like sheep and bloody cows and all that sort of stuff out the back. So when I was young, bro, I used to just run out there and try to bloody tackle sheep and <laughs> ride cows, like ride cows and that, bro. When I was younger, like with my cousins and stuff, we always used to like play games on like who can sneak up on a sheep and like hold on to it the longest bro when you jump on them bro they like they actually quick bro like they're fast ass. so um we used to just crack up laughing and like you know cows and that like bulls like we used to see like who could run across the paddock without getting like charged by the bull bro because they'll just come up yeah bro it was just fun bro like when you're younger you just do like dumb shit like that but you actually think about it now and you're like fuck it's actually pretty dangerous but <laughs> It's just like how, like, I think that's just like how, like, most Kiwis are raised, bro. Like, like, you yeah. know, just doing stuff out in the forest and in the paddock or whatever, like, bare feet, no shirt, just, just enjoying life. Snotty and, nose, cold, cold toe. Yeah, bro. It's <laughs> just loving it. So, like, that's, that's what we did, bro. Like, used to go airling and that out there. There was a massive river that used to run through it. So, you go airling at night, bro. Like, just stuff like that. And mm. I, I miss those days, eh? I miss those days. So, yeah, it was out there for, like nearly all my life and um I started off playing rugby um at this like my mum got a house in in this place called Burnside in Christchurch and I started playing rugby when I was four years old uh for Burnside um bro and I was just massive like I was a big boy like 
it's a big kid and I uh, got to the point bro where my mum had to take um my passport down and um because like parents didn't believe that you know I was four like running around with five-year-olds and back then I was playing first so I was Gumby bro I was a big Gumby boy and I'd just be running and you know, like as soon as my ripper got ripped it'd take me a while to slow down and I accidentally piss bowl some poor kid like it was just it just got real bad and then my quarter like he always played rugby league so he was like nah we're gonna go sign him up for rugby league so I did one year of rugby and then went to rugby league um pretty much yeah the next year and bro I just fell in love with it eh? I just um loved rugby league and played that all the way up to high school so I went to Christchurch Boys High School at, at the start um you know like played um rugby like I wasn't really interested in rugby there like I was still playing rugby league and once I got into that school bro it's just like you know you know what like high school like you know first 15 rugby's like bro it's just like it's it's a it's a different buzz eh? it's like the whole school's behind you, the old boys. And I wasn't even interested. Like, honestly, hadn't, like, nothing really, like, thought about it until I went to that school. And I was like, far out. I remember watching the college match against, um, it was Crushers Boys tie against Christ College, bro. And um, that was the first time I've, I've seen Damien McKenzie for, at uh, Christ College. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, bro, like, I remember sitting with my mates and they're like, bro, this number 15, this little white boy, bro, he's a gun. Like, he's a freak. <laughs> and I was like, I was like looking at him and I was like, oh, yeah. Like, you know, year <laughs> nine. I was like, oh, yeah, looking at him. Like, no size, no nothing, bro. And then he's just ripping it up, like, just carving up our school, bro. Like, slotting the kicks too. Like, doing that, that small thing he does now, bro. Like, he was doing yeah. that in high school. Like, like, <laughs> like he was just loving it. How small was, was it back then? Like... Bro, he was tiny, bro. Like, honestly, I reckon he was, like, probably nearly 90 kilos. Like, I reckon, like, 88, 89 kilos. Like, oh, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. just, like, just ripping in, bro. Like, tackling <laughs> big boys, too. And, like, in our, in our, in our, who's in our team? Like, um, bro, in our, like, first 15 team, oh, we had, like, Nasi Manu, I'm pretty sure. He was in that team that year. And, then, um, Oh, Will Jordan. Will Jordan yeah. was in there then. And, bro, like, it's, it's buzzy, eh, to think, like, I went to, like, school with, like, those, like, like the, especially Will Jordan, bro. Like, that guy's, like, killing it at the moment. And all he's doing well, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, bro, um, Alex Nankerville, I think he's one of your, your oh, mates as well. Shit. Yeah, bro, he was in there too. So, <laughs> bro, like, yeah, bro he, he's a good fella, eh, old Alex. Um, he cracked me up too. We still stay in touch too, so. Oh, that's good. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, like, Bro, it was just like one of those things. I remember watching that college match and like, bro, there was so many people there. And I was like, I want in. Like, yeah, I want yeah, in. Yeah. I want in. And then um, just like, just did high school and stuff like that. And then I gave rugby a go in year nine and, you know, made like the, the 15 A's and stuff like that. But I didn't tell them I was still playing league. <laughs> so I was playing league. So when I was like year nine, bro, I used to be on um, Monday nights. So I used to play rugby on sad days and then league on Monday nights. But the perfect thing was, is that the training So I had training every single night, but like they didn't like clash, you know, clash at all. So yeah. I'd have like league, league on, um, league game on a Monday night and then rugby training on a Tuesday. And like, I used to be sore as bro. Like if I had niggles and all that, but I used to just keep quiet, not say anything. Cause like I was worried about, you know, if I, cause they were very like, you know, Christchurch boys, bro. It's a rugby dominant school. Like, yeah, like right. rugby league, like that word, bro, is like a curse word at that school. So. <laughs> Who did you play? Yeah, I, oh, I played league for um, Hornby Panthers. So, like, um, the same, it was the same club as um, like David Kidwell. So is league quite big down in Christchurch? Not, not really, bro. Like, it, it's not really that big. Like, I, I, it's growing now, but when I like started, bro, it wasn't that big. Like, Christchurch is just all rugby and cricket like and a bit of soccer but mostly rugby bro because you know the crusaders and bro, everyone in Christchurch loves the crusaders so yeah um yeah it was not re leagues not wasn't really that big and um yeah but like I just I just loved the like you know I felt like I got more ball and there was more space in rugby league and then then rugby and then yeah I just gave rugby a go and because I wanted to play first 15 so yeah, did all of that and then ended up making like the first of Dean. I think I was year 11, um, got in the first of Dean team and I was excited. I was so keen and I was like, yeah, no, bro, I only played like, 
how many games did I play? I think I played like six games. And I remember I went away in the school holidays for a rugby league camp. It was like New Zealand Kiwi 16s. Yeah. And I went away for that, bro. It was like, they got like 40 boys around New Zealand and then they have a massive, um, like a trial, like a week's camp and then a trial at the end of it. And then they select the team from that. Was that with Itzene? Did you do that with him or? Yeah, so he was in, no, so he was, um, the, so there was 16s and there was 18. So he was in the 18s trial. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like there was like 80 boys all up. So there was like 40 in the 18s and 40 in the 16s. Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah, Etienne was in that. And um, I think she, like Chanel Harris Tavita, like they were all in the 18s and all that sort of stuff. And I was like down below with, um, like, who was I with? Like, um, like I was with like um, Stafford Tour, who's at Newcastle Knights, like Matthew Timokor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Who, um Canberra Raiders like I was all with like those boys and um yeah so we did that and I ended up like doing like really well in, in that trial and um like I was captain of my trial team and then I got captain of the the 16s like actual team and I got um like the you know like they do an MVP of the tournament like of the camp and I got the MVP of the camp and like I was stoked bro I was like man like you know this is gonna like start <laughs> kickstarting like what I've dreamed of to play NRL and all that sort of stuff and then went back to school and like term I think it was like term three I think bro I went back to school in term three and um bro it was all over the paper like all over the, like that I made the team and MVP and all that sort of stuff bro like first day of school got called into the head um coach's office and the principal's office and they're like bro what's this and I was like oh like just had no words and they oh, like, awesome. yeah, they were off it, bro. They were off it, but they were like, but I said to them, I was like, bro, it doesn't clash. Like, you know, I've been turning up every training, like, rah, rah, rah. and then they were like, nah, mate, like, you know, we need you 100% fully committed. You haven't, like, rah, rah. and I was like, bro, but I have been, like, that is it was some just going, shit, bro. Yeah, bro, it was going back and forth. It was going back and forth. And then they just full on, like, outrightly told me, like, right then and there, they just went, right, you need to pick one or the other, like, right now. Like you either pick us or you go play rugby league. And I was like, oh, but like, but so when I was 15, I, I, um, I signed my first, um, NRL contract with the Broncos. So like the junior development stuff. Yeah. And I couldn't, I already couldn't, signed. yeah, I was already signed at 15. Uh -huh. So I couldn't quit league. Yeah. So all I was thinking was like, bro, like I can't, like it doesn't, like I was trying to like say, like it doesn't clash, like it's not clashing, like, everything's sweet rah, rah, rah. and they're like nah we can't risk it rah, rah, rah. and I was like rah. and I just said look like I put I put rugby league then and I didn't think they were expecting that because like they just went dead quiet and they were like all right yep sweet and they just pretty much told me to go back to class and then it got real bad bro around the school so like there was massive rumors going around saying like I quit the quit the rugby rugby team because I wanted to go play rugby league and you know, like there was heaps of rumors saying, like uh, people saying I was too big for the team. You know, they thinking uh -huh. I was too good for the team. So I quit, bro. And then, like teachers, bro, like teachers started like hating on me and stuff like that. Like it just got real out of hand, and like it got to the point, bro, where like one of the teachers was like, um, like you know, I was lining up in the hallway, bro, ready to go to class, and he was just like, mate, what are you even doing at the school? Like, why are you here? Like, you, you know, you don't even want to play rugby. You don't want to contribute to the school. Like, why are you here? And I was just like, dude, you're a teacher. Like, you're is... telling me that? Oh, shit, man. Bro, like, I was I was like, fuck. So I went home, bro. I told mum, and my mum just lost it, bro. My mum was like, you fucking serious, bro? bro? Like, he's a fucking teacher. You can't be talking to a student like that. So... My mom just like, bro, no hesitation, threw me in the car. She drove, we drove down like after school hours, went straight in there. And she just like going off at the principal, going like, how do you, rah, rah, rah. You remember you know, his name, the from... teacher? No, oh, his last name, uh, the people called him like Mr. Bone, but bro, I, I can't remember his first name, bro, but I'll never forget his face. Cause like it was a big school, bro. Like it was a massive school. So, but I'll never forget his face. And I was just like, bro, this dude, like, Shout out, Mr. Bone, your knob. Look where he is now. Yeah, bro, like, fuck. Bro, like, I've always thought about it, too. Like, he's probably, like, like, I hope he's looking at me now going, fuck, like, I, I, I was just too. talking. To, yeah, yeah, like, I was talking to this kid thinking he was a bum, but, like, now he's fucking, you know, living his, <laughs> living his dream, bro. And I've always just wanted to just be like, shame, like, that's what you get. Fuck, yeah. idiot. Like, that's just, yeah. 
bro but it was just it just got real toxic bro like um principal and that didn't really care and um you know i started going to like i was at school bro like i got dropped down to second 15 but like that that um team didn't really like they were like oh he's playing league as well like we don't really want him either so i was playing second 15 bro and like you know it got to the point bro where my friends like bro like the boys like my boys like we're good now like you know we all hashed it out and stuff like that and they understand like what i what i'm doing and all that sort of stuff and like you know this has been my dream the whole time but bro they were off me eh? like my mates because they were caught up in that you know like how could you turn on your school and all that sort of stuff yeah. and you know this is this is the way we should do it like we're gonna be yeah. bloody stick to the boys together we we're gonna do this and that and then they all thought i like turned my back on them and bro like I, it got i was just lonely bro like they didn't want to talk to me anymore I stopped inviting me to stuff like i was I had no mates in high school, bro. It was bad. Like, oh, shit. Was, yeah, I had no, like, home, no mates in high school, bro. Like, it was got, like, real bad. But I had, like, my league boys. Like, my league boys, like, you know, because I was still playing with them. They were, like, they were real, real tight, real close. So, I had them. So, I was, like, hanging out with them. And, you know, like, it got, like, I was trying to message my high school mates. Like, oh, what are you doing this weekend? Should we go to the beach? Should we go get a feed? Like, no reply, no nothing. Like, it was like that, bro. And I was like, oh, so my mom's like, you know what? Like, fuck that. I'm going to pull you out. Like, she's like, so she sent me to the school called St. Thomas of Canterbury, which is like, not, you know, like first of day, they've got a first of Dean team, but it's not that great. Um, You know, they've got some like good quality, like they've got some great like players there, but it's a league school as well. So they encourage you to do both. So like they play league for the school and then they play rugby for the school as well. So they oh, yeah. enter in like school competitions, like all around, like in New Zealand, they do a big nationals thing at the end of the year. And I was like, I want to go to that school. And the boys that I played league with in the team, um, in my club team, they all went to that school. So it was perfect, perfect fit. So I went there, bro. And I just loved it. Like they were just real encouraging. Like, you know, you play first 15 as well. You play league um, on a Thursday, like the school competition was on a Thursday. So I used to play league on a Thursday and first of Dean for my school on a sad day. So I just fell in love with the school, bro. And, um, you know, like I, I was so happy to, so happy to be at that school. And, you know, I'm proud to say that I'm, I'm a, you know, I graduated there and I'm, a, I'm an old boy at that school as well. So it was just, yeah, it's just such a cool school and such a cool vibe. And I keep in contact with, you know, um, those like those teachers and those coaches at that school too i recently went back home and visited that school as well and, and talked to some of the kids and what i did to get to where i am now so no it was just real cool bro and yeah i loved the school and I was mad because i got to verse crush it was higher when i played rugby <laughs> Did you? and there was a massive turnout like so like i think there was a, it was like out in the local paper it was um it just said my name versus my school so I said Jordan Ricky versus Christchurch Boys High. Like it was in like this little like bit. My mum still got it to like um kept it home to this day. And like it was a massive turnout. Like every, like the whole school was turning up. And I remember I ran out on the field and the St. Thomas's colours against Christchurch Boys. And like, bro, I just got bagged and booed by the whole team. Like the whole That's school. Awesome. Was just like, yeah, bro. But I just loved it. Like I was like, fuck, I'm gonna show you. Like, fuck, yeah. like. Bro, because I'm just one of those people, bro. Like, if you like, if you shit on me, or you say, "Oh fuck, you know, he's not good enough," or he's not that, I'm like, in my mind, I'm just like, "Fuck, I'll show you then." Like straight away, like, "Fuck, yeah. I'll show you." Like, bro, like when I and when I do, I'll let you know about it. Like that's like who I am. So I'll be like, "Fuck, I'll show you then." And when I do, I'll fucking tell you straight away. Like I'll be like, "Fuck, that's what you get." Like you shouldn't be talking shit. Like that's yeah, how I roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. And, and that's just how like I, I like always been like. And like I'll like you know I'll let you know about it and then you know hopefully that and then you'll shut up and be like oh fuck alright probably shouldn't have like <laughs> done all that. Yeah. no bro I just remember that game eh like I was just fuck like a ball in a china shop bro like I was just into everything like trying to smoke everyone like trying to get a turnover bro like everything eh and we ended up I ended I scored a try too and I was just like <laughs> just like screaming and that like, yeah. like just real into it bro and um yeah it was just funny eh? and um we well, I remember we just lost too and um like just lost by like three points like I think they got like a buddy they got like a penalty out in front and they got it and like that was the closest our school like ever got to crush boys high as well yep. 
at, at that time. So, yeah, it was just a cool buzz, bro. But, yeah, that was just how it was. And, yeah, when I graduated, um, moved over to Brizzy and, yeah, just been here ever since. And, then you know, I've been loving it and been just trying to live my dream. Did, did rugby ever hit you up? Um, not really, eh? Like, um, they have, like, this thing called Crusaders Academy, uh, Academy but... Yeah. Um, no, I don't think I ever got like hit up about um, Crusaders Academy or anything like that. Mate, I don't know if they, oh, I don't know if I wasn't good enough at rugby. Or I don't know, but um, no, I just never really got um, hit up about it. But it is definitely like, um, like I have definitely thought about it, like either now, like could be maybe in the future, maybe the back end of my career, because like I'd still love to, like growing up and watching the All Blacks, bro, like what Roger Toy Vasashek's doing, like, bro, I just think that's mean. And like Sonny Bill and all that, like he was a yeah. pretty kind of the first one that took charge. Oh, actually, Brad Thorne. Brad Thorne was like the first oh, yeah. one that, yeah. that took charge, really. So, um, let's, bro, say you yeah. had stayed, let's say you had a stayed at um, Christchurch Boys, that shit never happened, and you got yeah. to 13, and um, Crusaders just turned around and were just like, uh, we want to offer you like a, this big this deal to, to come and join the crusades do you reckon that from all that shit that happened at christchurch boys might might have changed what you would have done what do you reckon you were set on league i don't know bro i like because i loved league bro yeah. <laughs> like i loved it eh? I, I like i loved it and yeah i don't know that's actual i haven't i've never been asked that before that's a, <laughs> that's a good question but I honestly don't know. It'd be tough, but yeah, like, even because like, Crusaders are a good team too. Oh, hundred percent. And guys like um, like obviously I went to school with Etienne, and yeah, um, he was obviously signed with League. Hey, he was signed with the Warriors. Yeah, the um, the whole the whole Warriors thing, eh? And now, and then yeah. he he ended up leaving because um he wanted to play rugby, but like I think from the young age he was playing all those teams like you did. Um, he yeah. signed at a really young age as well, but then he went yeah. to 13 and obviously being at a big rugby school and he just like, oh, decided, oh, I want to play rugby or whatever he did. I didn't really talk to him about it, but I just yeah. wonder I think, if, if that might've changed anything in your path. Not that I you think um, change now, but like. Yeah, I, I think like the thing is like about those big rugby schools is that they do like, I know for a fact, bro, that they do get a lot of league players. Like they grow up playing league. And then they go to a rugby school and like they just get converted straight away. Like, yeah. right, yeah, rugby. And then they stick at rugby. Like, but like people can go the other way. Like, bro, like didn't Suli Vunavalu and like Nelson yeah. Solomona, like they played first 15, bro. Like Nelson was at um, Wellington, like one some Wellington rugby rugby school, first 15, everything. In college, I think. Bro, and he's off the storm. And then Suli was the same. Suli was at, uh, was it St. Kent's? Yeah, was that? Yeah, yeah but, and he's at Storm. Oh, he's played back to rugby now, but um, he went to Storm and all that. So, like, it just just depends. Like, I think everyone's on, like, a different pathway and, um, like, whatever. Like, at the time, I I got given a contract by Broncos and, like, I'm a loyal person. So, yeah. I wanted to stick by that. So, I think that's why I, I, I stayed at rugby, rugby league at the time. But if I wasn't contracted anything, like, yeah, 100% could have gone a different way. So, when did they approach you, G? Like, was it at that tournament? Yeah, so they do a national tournament. So it's like um, Akarana, Counties Monaco, like all that sort of stuff. And they do it at like um, in Rotorua. So it's like, um, it's like it was 15s and 17s. I don't know if it's still the same now, but it's 15s and 17s. Yeah, and um, played 15s and all that sort of stuff. And they have scouts there, you know, like Bulldogs, Parramatta, like all the, pretty much nearly all the NRL scouts are there watching, get, like trying to get good young talent. But yeah. Um, you know, most of them have already been picked up by man, because Warriors pick up kids so young. Like I True. reckon it yeah, bro, like like young, like 13, like they do like camps and all that in Auckland, like in Auckland, and they do like camps for like 13 year olds, I'm pretty sure. So like they get kids young, bro. And oh. they sign a lot of kids too. Like, um, but like, yeah, I think that's just like how they've always been, like, because they don't want the good New Zealand talent leaving out in new zealand obviously so they try, yeah, they try to sign like so many like kiwis as they can so um yeah but yeah like i, I got approached by um the bronco scout and, and a couple other scouts um at but like at when 
when you're there, bro, it, they you get told that if they they're not allowed to come to you, they have to go to like your parent or your manager. Yeah. So like I had no idea until like my manager um at the end of the tournament was like, oh bro, like you know this this and this club uh, want to talk to your mum, and I was like buzzing on the flight back home. I was like, ah, oh, like man, <laughs> not watching me, like and all the boys. But I wanted to keep it quiet too because like you know like uh, I like you don't want to rub it in other people's faces like that are in your team as well. So like you get told and then like, you just there on the plane with a big smile on your face. Can't wait to get <laughs> home and talk to mom. But you just didn't want to bring it up and tell the boys like, cause that was the thing back then. Like, fuck, bro, how, how, how many uh, scouts have hit your family up? And like, Oh yeah, this and this, but like someone hasn't been talked to yet. Like, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like I think that was shit, bro. So I always tried to keep real quiet about it, especially at like those tournaments and stuff like that. And then, um, yeah, they just um, contacted my mum and, um, you know, my mum sat down with them and, and, and another team. And at the time, we thought that Broncos was the best for me. And they flew me and my mum over and had a look at the club. And, yeah, it was just mean, bro. Like, I remember I first walked into the club and seen, like, Sam Friday and, like, Darren Lockie is walking around. And I was just like, fuck, <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, these guys are legends, like, at the club and, I just couldn't believe it, eh? So, yeah, they used to fly me over like three or four times a year and do camps and, and little trials and stuff like that until I was old enough to move over. So, yeah. Shit, that's crazy. So, like, yeah, when you went over, why why did you sort of pick Brisbane over anything else? Or And what, what were the other clubs? Do you remember? Yeah, so, like, um, I think Rab Rabbitohs were one. Um, Cronulla and Parramatta and then Broncos. Those are, I'm pretty sure those are the clubs that were like interested after the tournament. And um, honestly, like the guy that contacted my mum was like, he was real, like, cause you know, whatever my mum chooses and wants, like, you know, if, you know, like as a Maori boy, like if your mum says do something, you do it. <laughs> like, like, you know, or like your, your koro, your nan, like someone in your family goes, nah, I want you to do that. Or I'm happy with this like they they sort of decide for you so my mom had my best interest at heart you know so like whatever she said I'll do so um I think all of them ended up ringing up my mom and my mom said like you know the Broncos guy he rang and he was you know a lot more respectful than what the other people were and and all that wow. sort of stuff and he had, he had a lot he had a lot more to say and all that sort of stuff so my mom was like you know what boom like that's the we want to we'll we'll give it a try we'll give it a shot like you know if we're not interested we can come back and we can have another rediscussion and all that sort of stuff so yeah I think that was it and we went over there and bro like the just the junior development like um was just insane like um they have this thing called EPD which is like you come in at 15 and then they'll train you right up to NRL and if you're good enough you move on to the NRL squad um, so um, I think when I first started, bro, there was 15 of us boys and every year got chopped down. So I was, I was, there was me and another boy from New Zealand. They were the only two boys from New Zealand and the rest of them were from like all around Queensland and a few from Sydney. Um, so we used to come in at a 15 camp and then every single camp that I used to go back, you would notice that, oh, fuck, um, you know, um, is Chris here? isn't here. Like, oh, how, where's Chris? Like, we were, we were just, like, real oblivious to it. But, like, now I know is that they were dropping kids off, like, one by one, like, all the way up to NRL. So, like, oh, he's, you know, he's got an average attitude, so we didn't really want him. Like, it's just it was just crazy. Like, now I think about it now, like, Shit. How, 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 like, good it was, bro, and how incredible it is. And so we started off with, like, 40 kids when we were 15. And then, bro, we got to the end of, like, when I was 17 and there was eight of us left. <laughs> yeah. Like there was eight of us left and we were just like, and then they're like, right boys, um, NRL, like, you know, they're going to offer five of you a top 30 contract. Um, like, Oh, rookie contract. They're going to offer five of you. So like th three of you miss out, two of you miss out. Like it's pretty full on bro. Like it's what the hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's just how it was. And, like, I remember every time I went back, like, I made sure, like, I was trying to be the fittest, the strongest, like, because they test you and all that. And yeah. you do army camps as well. And they test, like, your attitude and how you communicate with others, how you are around others. Like, they watch everything, bro. Like, yeah. legit everything. So, no, nah, it's awesome. And, like, I'm happy to be here. And, you know, like, a, 
I felt like I worked my ass off to get here. So I just yeah. want to keep working and nah, it'd be good. Um, how, how long is your contract total? So I was, so I got offered a rookie contract uh, when I was 17. Uh, so then I moved over. That was into the NRL squad when I was 17. So I moved over and then I, so I re-signed at the start of this year till end of 2024. So I'm, um, yeah, so I'm here for a while. Yeah, so it's good. Was there any other um, teams that were in the in the chats or yeah, yeah there was yeah there was it was all um because i was coming off contract the end of this year and um you know there was some discussions and sort of stuff like that and then i remember like there was some discussions with you know some teams and because i played a bit of in i played nrl i debuted last year the back end of last year so um there's some little discussions there but i think like the conversations started really ramping up when i played the all-stars game in townsville this year yeah and like I, 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 like I thought I had a pretty good game, and I think after that it started really ramping up with like um, other clubs, and they're like, "Oh man, he's coming off contract." So, yeah. But my manager that I've got, you know, like I, I let him do all that because like he, he's good, bro. He just lets me just, just play footy and and just enjoy my life. And yeah, that's the one. He just worries about the contract stuff, the money stuff, and him and my mom, like they've got a great relationship. Uh, my manager, and my mom, so um you know like if you know there's any money worries or contract worries like they'll try to sort it out before it comes to me so i don't have to stress and and worry about it because i'm a massive stress head bro sometimes like i'll stress about like little shit so yeah no it's just really good how they they take control of that and um yeah no it's it's real cool have you you, do you reckon you've changed anything this year to like to what you've done in previous years or um because you've gone off quite a bit this year eh, bro like that last year, oh, and obviously that's probably partly due to the fact that you're now like a regular in the NRL team now. Like you're obviously a regular player. So, um, do you feel like you changed anything, or you just? Um, well, bro, I don't know. I, I feel like um, so obviously like consistency is massive. Yeah. Um, in in any sport, so I, I feel like as a like as a young person, it was hard for me to sort of try get that consistency and like obviously there was that worry too like if you have a mean game like your next game you're like fuck i gotta play the same like you know what i mean but like sometimes bro like it's not all about that and i've only like sort of just recently learned that it's like if you have a mean game like me you killed it you had a mean game yeah you were there at the right time but in the next game bro if you just do your job like don't like don't miss tackles you know, make your tackles, do your runs, you know, run your bright lines, bro. That's a good game. Yeah, like, yeah. Just because you don't score a try, you don't do a mean runaway. Like that's a good game, bro. Like that's a good game. And yeah. I think that was just, yeah. like the consistency where I had to sort of like learn is like, if you just do your job, your coach is happy, you do your job, you win, your teammates are happy, the fans are happy. Like that's just the, you, that's all you just got to worry about is like doing your job. And like, for me, Mine's just, I'll get told by Kevy, like our coach and our players all the time. It's like, bro, don't worry about all this other shit that's going on about, you know, you making breaks or running over someone. It's just fucking run your lines and make your tackles and keep it simple. I get told that every single game, every single, every single game. He just goes, keep it simple, do your job. Boom, done. I'm that's like, yeah, all right. good, man. And it just keeps my head refreshed. Like, I don't, I don't have all these other thoughts going on. It's like, right, sweet just try to keep refreshed and if shit doesn't and the other thing that I, I struggled with is um you know if I made an error or if I missed a tackle I used to be like so hard on myself bro like I used to be like fuck like and I'll just get in my own head so yeah. I've been talking like um with like this sports coach he's been really good for me his name's Mick um and he's worked with like um Billy Slater Darren Lockyer like all those sort of guys so um my coach got me onto him and um yeah like he's just been awesome like i'll call him sometimes when i'm real stressed out for a game I'm like, bro like fuck like like and he'll just calm me right down and he'll just be like mate yeah, yeah. don't worry like he's just good bro like i love him and um i think that's like some like some of the things that like people don't see behind the scenes eh? like they just see like oh man he's like what's going on with this guy like he's had a shit game like <laughs> but yeah. there's like stuff that goes on behind the scenes as well so I think like us talking about it like now, how like me and you are just having the discussion, like, you know, bro, I go through stress and, you know, shit on social media and all that sort of stuff as well. So it's just like, we're humans too, bro. But some people just seem to forget that and 
bloody think we're robots and yeah bro know. that's the one yeah. hey and yeah, like yeah 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 it's been say you and um the accountant who's watching the the game is that like they go to work and they don't have a million people watching them and every yeah time they, drop the yeah. Pen, they don't get booed at so like it's yeah so, you're just almost living in a fish tank within your job and um same thing with me that fucks me off and i remember seeing you just recently put up something um about some hate that you got copped after a game and that sort of yeah shit. bro yeah because like bro i'm i'm the harshest critic ever on myself like anyone that knows me well bro like like they'll be like man like ricky you had a, you had a pretty mean game and i'll be like yeah bro but you know i missed two tackles like i, I think about like that's how i am after a game like oh fuck like yeah, but I did this wrong. I did this wrong. Like, and I'll think about the negative more than what I did the positive. Like, oh, you know, I ran a good line, but like, oh no, but I missed two tackles. Like, I'll think more about that. So, I'm getting better at that now. But um, yeah, it was just like that's just how it was. And obviously, after the Newcastle Knights game, like, I didn't have the best game, and I knew that straight away. Like, as soon as I, as soon as the final whistle's gone, I'm just like fuck in my own head straight away like man I had the shittest game like just talking to myself and just like bro I don't I don't like it was just frustrating bro and and like it really like hurt me and like rattled me because like I'll, I'm a sensitive dude bro like I, I've got no like shame admitting that like I'm a sensitive person like I, I can I can easily admit that so um bro, here's the other thing know, I'm 21 <laughs> yeah yeah 21 bro and like what do you reckon i reckon that guy would have been mid 30s at least yeah yeah bro like i was just like dude like fuck, just fuck me off bro like i was like this bro doesn't even know me like <laughs> yeah. and then he just started talking about like you know how i was raised and like you know my family and all that and i was like dude fuck this guy bro and then like alex glenn who's our captain he could tell i was rattled bro because i was sitting on the bus and he was next to me and he's like, bro, you all right? And I was like, yeah, bro, all good. And then he's seen the, my phone and he's like, bro, give us a look at that. And like, I showed him and he's just like, fuck that shit, bro. And he's like, you name and shame that fella right now. And I was like, oh, really? And he's like, yeah, do it right now. I want to see you do it right now. And I was like, oh, shit, okay. Did it, bro. And then got home. Didn't really think much of it, eh? Like got home, fell asleep, bro. I woke up and I had like millions of messages from like, people just saying bro don't worry about that guy fuck that dude like you know missed calls from like family members you know all that sort of stuff so bro it was so cool to just see the the positive um i got from it like you know and um bro like that was funny eh? because i've got some like pretty hard teammates like back home and they're like fuck bro what's that fella's name i'm gonna try to, <laughs> i'm gonna fucking hit him up right 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 and i was like nah all good bro all good bro like you know how like some people are bro like yeah. i see that fella on the street dude i'm gonna fucking lay them like it just cracks me up bro like i got some like hard teammates back home and no nah, they're just like but like you know those are like the real ones you know they like got your back and like know you know me for who i am not just a rugby league player so nah it's cool it's cool so it was real cool to get like that feedback back and you know and then two weeks later bro i see that Corey norman stuff and i was like fuck that's just shit bro yeah. like you know what's wrong as well is that like obviously as players you're taught to um just like block out outside noise and stuff which obviously you have to do but like um just don't don't buy it and all this sort of shit yeah I'm out there going well fuck the dudes that are doing it like someone teach yeah them, someone teach those dudes to stop like where's the respect in that like you shouldn't be teaching the players how to react to the shit that's starting it in the first place like teach those right. And it makes you think, like, I wonder how they were brought up and or like, you know, to think that, like, bro, if my mum ever saw that, me doing that to someone, like, I'd get a hiding, bro. That is just... Yeah, bro. Yeah. It's just, like, but the it's, like, it's, bro, it's an all-sport, bro. Like, all-sport. And, like, actually, like, it's not even just sport, bro. Like, could be, like, a movie actor. Like, he puts his heart and soul in a movie, and then some people walk out of that movie and be like, fuck, that was a shit movie, bro. Like, that guy was shit in that movie. He's like, bro, he's just like, come on, bro. Like, you know, like, he was, like, I don't get it. Like, like I don't get it. Like, I just feel, like, sorry for those people, bro, that just got nothing better to do and just to uh, shit on other people. It's like, yeah. bro, sorry. It's like, oh, well, it is what it is now. And, bro, everyone's got a phone and everyone thinks they got a fucking thing to say. So, yeah, it's just easy access now, eh? You can just make a quicker fake account like you are saying before and, boom just misses the fella yeah yeah well 
yeah, that I guess the best thing you can do right now is what you usually do and just fucking keep doing you and use that use that mentality you keep talking about. I'll fucking show you sort of thing. So yeah, bro, yeah, that's just that's just what I love doing. <laughs> you do that yeah. and um and then just send them a little kissy face on OG or something after. <laughs> Hard, eh? <laughs> yeah, you with, like like we were just talking about it before, but like your manager and stuff. Um, do you have like a financial advisor or like? Does your manager help you with that sort of stuff? Obviously, we just talked about before certain things that you might be doing soon. Yeah, so um, yeah, my manager, um, bro, he's good, bro. Like, um, he he's um, so he works for a company called Esport F, but they have like people that work for the company that like got nothing. So he deals with the rugby league side of it, and then um, so in the same company, they've got like lawyers, they've got um you know people that deal with money like it's just all in the same company so it's real good so it's real handy so if I ever get in trouble and I need a lawyer I can go through a lawyer through the same through like the same company that my manager works for so it's like it's like real good bro and um he's got heaps of contacts too my manager does so um you know they they've just been real cool and like you know I like yes I've been wanting to buy a house and I'm getting ready to buy a house soon. So just going through all the paperwork and, and the money stuff and all that sort of stuff. And I, I didn't realize how, how stressing it can be sometimes. And I've never really dealt with paperwork or anything like that before, um, apart from my contract. So yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty full on. And um, yeah, and no, I'm just, I'm just keen to um, hopefully buy a house either here in, um, in Australia or, or, or back home. So no, it's exciting. And, um yeah no i just can't wait can't wait to see what the future has and and holds so yeah sweet to talk about your like why you're potentially gonna buy one back in nz yeah bro so like i wanna so like i've all my my biggest so my dream was obviously to play nrl but like the main dream and the main drive was to to buy my mama house and um yeah so that's the if i can i'd love to just get that done like as soon as possible like that was one of my first things i ever wanted to do if i started earning good money and uh, um is to buy my my house so i'm hoping you know i can buy a house in new zealand and and put my mom and and um you know my stepdad or my i call him dad but because you know he helped raise me most of my life so um put mom and dad in there and um yeah just they got a house at the moment so they can put someone to to rent it out and sort of they can pay off their mortgage and they can live in um the house that I've bought for them. So yeah, no, it's just exciting stuff. And um I haven't really told mum because I kind of want to keep it a bit of a secret. And I told my manager, because my manager and my mum are real tight. So I told my manager to, you know, not not really say much. So keep it on the on the down low. So no, it'll be really cool. So hopefully I can just um, you know, buy a house one day and go, oh here, mum, here's the keys. No, nice. hard. It's yeah. Up. I read that. Um bro. You- we we just watched the game in the weekend, I think it was, um, with the Warriors. Um, mm. With old little Reese Walsh, bro. Um, oh yeah. Did yeah. You have a little bit of a yarn to him after, or? Yeah, bro. He is. Um, oh, bro, he is like honestly, like a weapon. Like yeah. he has got so much talent, bro. Like it's insane. Like just. Like he's like one of those players that just like just silky and just makes it look so easy. Like a like a Roger Kalen Ponga sort of vibe. Like he is quick, bro. He's got mean ball skills. Like he just makes it like you just like um because he was at Bronx, bro, before he went to Warriors. And he came up in the in the junior grades that I was talking about earlier, also as well for the EPD and all that sort of stuff. And he was coming up and um I, I think I'm two years older than him. And when I was in the NRL, he was coming through and he was just like, he's funny, eh? Because he's this little, like, he's this little fella, but he's just cheeky as, like, he's real cheeky, likes to, bit of a pest, bro. But I love him, eh? Like, I love him. He's just like, just like, honestly, bro, like, like, just a big heart, like, massive heart. And like, he's got good ticker too, bro. Like, just, you know, wants to work and show everyone. And so what he can do, like, he's just a big heart. And, you know, he loves to have a laugh and real cheeky and all this sort of stuff. And um, he's just funny as he cracks me up. And, and yeah, like, you know, he, um, like, I call him my little bro. And, like, he calls, like, calls me his big bro and stuff like that. So we've got, like, a real cool relationship. So it was hard to see him go, bro. Like, 
Did they I remember that, like, what's that? Sorry, Did they just let him go, or was it like, a... yeah, like it's, it's sort of like a rough, like it's sort of like a hard thing to talk about, like you know, like it, it is pretty hard, but like I don't really know, like much detail so like you know it was obviously between reese and reese's manager and and the club like i've got really no detail so it was really hard for me to see see the little bro go and i remember when he told us and and that he was leaving and and all that sort of stuff you know and he said that he wanted to go learn under roger and i just said bro like those are those those are those things that one of once in a lifetime things bro like roger was probably or if not one of the best fullbacks in the game like easily and you know like to learn off him bro i'll just be like bro honestly bro 100 percent. like you got to take those opportunities bro and you know warriors were giving him a good contract so like that was very secure and all that sort of stuff so i was like bro like go enjoy it go go live your dream like you know you can't like i was saying before about how you know i could have chose rugby or rugby league i wanted to choose like, that was my dream and you know his dream was to play nrl and learn off the best so bro tops to him and you know he's been absolutely killing it and i'm i'm proud of him and every time i see him and stuff like that i tell him that i'm proud of him and you know he's killing it and he, he's he's one of those boys too that is very hard on himself as you could probably see after the after the our, our game you know he was on one knee and he was just gutted so um yeah i felt for him and you know he's he's young too but yeah like give him a couple more years bro he's gonna be an absolute freak like he'll be like tommy turbo like vibes bro like he will be a gun so um yeah he, he he's good bro and you know yeah me and walshie are real tight so he, he's a good boy too so yeah it's just it's just awesome to see that he's living his dream and you know being being a gun <laughs> did you yarn to him after that game yeah, yeah, I had a chat with him, like, um, all of us did, actually, because all of us are really close with him, because he's, like, you know, was with us for a while, so all of us are close with him, we just, like, bro, like, head up, bro, like, you know, like, you know, whatever comes, don't look into it, like, you know, the media and fans and all that sort of stuff, whatever comes, don't look into it, and we just let him know that we're there for him, and, you know, we don't, we're not pissed off at him for anything or anything like that, bro. Like, you know, like he's one of the bros and, you know, he, he's like family to us. So, you know, we just, we just let him know that and we're there to support him. So yeah, he was, uh, he was real grateful for that. So he's a good boy. Yeah. That's gun. And, and as a young buck, bro, like to step up in those moments, G, like, I just think I've thought the opposite. Like there was a lot of people going, Oh, I missed this, missed this. And I was like, Bro, he stepped up at 18 years old and takes a yeah, top goal to win the match. He does all this shit, and it's just like, not to forget that he also set up that try that um, almost bloody put them in front. So, like, I yeah, I just think, especially as well, now you think, like, if guys that are, we're talking about burner accounts and stuff, there's, mm. there's probably guys out there that messaged an 18-year-old boy, like, mm. up to, bro, and it's like, fuck, you serious? Yeah. Oh yeah, he like yeah, fuck. Like he put his hand up, bro, and had a crack. Like if he didn't, who would? Like you just don't know. Like he he was like, fuck. I like I see this moment. Like you know what I mean? It's just like because bro, on the field, like you got to have thinking like like legit like that. Yeah. And he was like, fuck. I see it. I'm gonna give it a crack. Yeah. Boom done. Like he missed it. Fuck that sucks, bro. You know. Fuck. Just get on with it. Like you just got to keep going into that final whistle. So. I think I can't, yeah. I can't remember if it was you or if it was someone else, but I'm pretty sure I saw, I think it might've been you and you tackled him. And when you got up, you patted him on the head. Was it yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bro. Cause like, he's just like, he's just one of the bros. Like, yeah. like you obviously you love playing against your mates and you want to hit him and all that. But like, you know, like you also got to let him know, like you're, you're there. Like, you know, you just like, oh, fuck, how are you bro? Like, I, I, it's funny. Like you always, you always, um, I've always, I've had you, you've had some couple of conversations with people on the field, eh? Like, yeah. like I remember when I played, like, um, like we played, when we played nights and we lost and I had a bit of a shit game. This was like in the first five minutes and I was at marker, tackled Kalen and he was playing the ball and I was like, fuck up to. <laughs> like, and then we just run off the road, tackle again. And, like you just, you just hear some funny, like some, some funny stuff. Like people have convos and then you hear some fucking crack up sledges, bro. Like people just roasting people, but it's just how it is, bro. On the field, like it's just funny as, yeah, so it's cool. It's cool. I love it.
like, I would have turned around, look at Reese, bro, for you and just be like, fuck, look what we're up to, G. Like, look up. Bro, I know. Like, it was insane. Like, and that was a pretty packed out stadium too. Like, so, yeah, it, it, it is pretty cool, eh, when you run out at, like, at the start of a game or at yeah. the end of a game or even half time, bro, you look around and you're like, fuck, bro, like, I can't believe I'm here. Like, I'm yeah. playing this game. Like, yeah. and, you know, you just got to enjoy the moment. Unreal, G. All right, well, we better crack on to some of these questions because you got about 10,000. <laughs> okay, now. Um, there's, we'll skip a few of them because there's heaps of them like, um, will you date me? Um, are you single? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so first one, we'll just fire through them quick fires, G. Um, what inspired you to do the haka to the young bro making his debut? Um. Xavier is a is a New Zealand boy. He's um you know he's he's a Waikato boy as well around Hamilton area. So that's where I'm from. Um and it was just a totoko bro, really. Like you know, like it's it's a it's a it's a thing that that Maldives do really. Like you know, bro. Like if if it's a twenty first or a wedding or a massive achievement, you you give them a totoko and you show them respect. So. For me, that just seemed like a suitable thing to do. And, um, yeah, I just cracked in and ripped in. And it was just mean that all the other Kiwi boys at Bronx jumped in behind me because, you know, they know if someone starts a hockey, everyone's got to everyone's got to jump in and help oh, the bro out. So, yeah, it was just off the bat, bro. Like, I remember tapping Danny Levi and I was like, oh, bro, we've got to give him a hucker. Like, you know, his mum and dad were there. Like, his mum was there, his dad was there, his, his, you know, his, his brothers and sisters, like, they're all Kiwis. Like, we got to – like, it just seemed like – in my head like the suitable thing to do so i did it and yeah i just got his people saying like oh bro that was mean like did you guys like tee that up or anything like that it's like no nah, bro it's just just what we do like it's what we do back home like you just jump you just jump straight in and show them that the respect that that they deserve when they've worked hard for something so yeah that's too great there um do you practice tikanga maori while living in aussie karakia before eating no sitting on tables etc yep Always, always. My mom would give me a slap on the head if I don't. <laughs> yeah, always. Cut a care, always. No sitting on tables, you know, no shoes inside. Like, just proper tikanga Māori hard. So, um, you know, we've got, like, in our whare at the moment, we've got, um, you know, some, like, some stuff that, like, pictures and and, and Māori um, quotes and sayings that are around the house at the moment too. So, it sort of feels like my home inside of Australia. So, Nah, it's cool, bro. So, yeah, we're real into, um, you know, like just keeping it how how I was raised here. So, yeah, nah, it's been real good. Um, with the addition of Adam Reynolds coming to the Broncos next year, what will he bring to the club? Bro, he's just, he's mean, bro. He's a gun, eh? Like, you know, he, he'll bring obviously that experience and leadership that he's got, that he's been doing at, at the Rabbitohs. Um, you know, I heard he's a bit of a pest, so it'll be cool to um to see what he's like and how he how he goes with some of the boys. So that'll be cool too. But yeah, no, I'm just excited for him to come and just learn. You know, he's a halfback and I'm second row, so um he'll be feeding me the ball pretty much 95 percent of the time. So um I'm just keen to just learn off him and you know um just pick his brain, bro. And you know he's been in big games and big moments and matches, so. Um, yeah, he'll just definitely bring that good leadership and and uh yeah, I just can't wait. It'd be real cool. Um all these ones. What's it like being the man? Why are you so hot? Do you do draw workouts? <laughs> draw workouts. Draw workouts. Uh, would you date a fan? <laughs> uh how do you how do you deal with hate from people after a hard loss? Yeah. So, yeah, I try not to just read it, bro, but, uh, like, a hard loss or, like, dealing with crap, like, you know, on social media or from fans or whatever, I think my 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 go-to is just always my family, eh? Like, obviously, they're not here, which is hard, but um, my go-to would be, you know, ringing my family or um, just, you know, just relaxing and, and just talking crap, really, away, like, not even talking about the game. Like, I just don't, like, you know, they know that I'm not happy with my performance or anything like that, or they know that I'm filthy about a loss, but they just they just know that they don't bring it up. We just talk about other stuff about, like, you know, my, my baby brother's, you know, got an assignment coming up. What should we write about? Like, just stuff like that. So, 
it's just real cool. And and my other thing is, bro, is just going to the beach. Like I love going to the beach, bro. Have it, nothing's better than, you know, grabbing a coffee and just walking down to the beach real early, watching the sun come in. You know, getting a, getting the getting a good good early morning swim in or a surf and just relaxing and just taking your mind off footy. So, yeah, I'm, I'm been trying to find things um, that I can do also as well. Like I'm giving golf a bit of a crack with some of the boys and. It's a bit hard. I get frustrated because, um, you know, they say it's a peaceful game, but fuck, it just pisses me off if I don't want the, if the ball doesn't go where I want it to go. But I'm trying to give it a crack, bro. But uh, yeah, nah, just just those, probably those things, eh? those two really at the moment. But um, yeah. Uh, what's the best piece of advice you can give someone? Ooh. Probably, probably run your own race. And what I what I mean by that is um, don't be so busy and caught up with comparing yourself to others. So, um, you know, if you want to, you know, go out and chase your dream and, you know, you've got friends or you've got teammates or whatever that have the same dream as you or, you know, they've got a different dream, but they're achieving more than you. Like, you know, don't be so caught up in, why they're doing that do you know what i mean like you you just run your own race and you just um work your ass off and and you know and and, and things will come like you know there's sometimes it comes easier for some people sometimes it comes harder for some people that's just how life is and you just gotta you know run your own race keep your head down and and you know just never get complacent just just keep working hard working hard always finding answers and you know all that sort of stuff and trying to learn as much as you can but yeah I, I just I just feel like just don't compare yourself to others and I know that it, it's hard sometimes especially with social media as well you know like especially Instagram I know yeah. that you know people look like they're living a glamorous lifestyle because they're posting all these photos and all that sort of stuff with Gucci bags but they could be 50 grand in debt like you know what I mean you just don't know so um just yeah just run your own race and um yeah just just you know, stay true to yourself. Don't don't be caught up in 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 the in the bullshit. So yeah. Um, describe your perfect weekend. Oh, probably just with the family, bro. Just with the family at the beach, barbecue, barbecue on the beach, bro. Playing some touch footy, like you know, just throwing the ball around on the beach, bro. Nice, nice, perfect weather. Having a swim. That's probably like my my perfect weekend and then you know have have a couple of drinks you know and when the youngins go to bed with your cousins and your family and just enjoy it so yeah um what's what's your favorite part about the nrl um probably just like what was what we spoke about with like Reese and that probably just like playing with your mates you know like um you're just playing with your mates that you like you trained hard with you worked your ass off with blood sweat tears you out there you're playing with your mates you're looking around you're like man i want to work my ass off for you all that sort of stuff and even playing against your mates like you know like it just brings that excitement and um stuff like that and obviously all the hype around nrl about you know oh, you're famous or you're all that sort of stuff like i don't really like like i don't, I don't really like being called that like you know my mates do it as a joke and every now and then like oh man you're famous now you can't hang out with us it's like bro come on like these are my boys like we grew up with you it's like i hate hearing that like that um sort of stuff but they know they're just um like joking around with it but yeah probably just playing with your mates bro and just enjoying it and um just living the dream really like i wanted to play nrl and that's my dream and you know i want to be a great nrl um rugby league player so just working my ass off to 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 get there so yeah that's true this uh who, who's your favorite teammate oh <laughs> it's pretty tough bro it is pretty tough bro probably probably like i can't go i can't go past pain i like big pain Huss. Oh, yeah. bro he is just like fuck, he's an animal bro like yeah. Bro, like just meter eater, runs hard, try saving tackles. Bro, like he he does try saving tackles when he's not even supposed to be there. Like, bro, like they'll put a grubber through and then he'll just come out of nowhere, bro, and like smack it out. So like, fuck, where did you come from, bro? Like, he's just he's just a freak, bro. He's a freak. 
and um, he's actually he's good quality off the field too. Like he's got some, he's just got some good banter and stuff like that. So like, he's a good fella, and um, yeah, he just cracks jokes every now and then. But yeah, on and off the field, probably that fella. But uh, bro, I reckon all my teammates are we're all real tight, bro, because we're such a young young group. So we're all very tight, and we always hang out all the time. But um, yeah, probably probably big pain though but yeah like I said bro all my teammates are, are, are cool and I love them so yeah uh what career path would you be doing if you weren't playing rugby league um oh bro most of my family are teachers so my mum's a teacher my my um my auntie my uncle they're all teachers so um bro probably going down that path because we've got such a big family and so many cousins and younger brothers and sisters like I feel like I'm pretty good around kids. I can, um, like, not easily handle kids, but, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable around kids. So uh, probably going down the teaching path, eh, like, um, giving that a crack. And I, I have actually thought about it, and um, I'm doing some, like, stuff at the moment uh, where I can, like, I'm not doing teacher's college, but I'm doing, like, every certificate I can to sort of maybe get there in the future. So, like, you know, I'm doing, like, a counselling certificate at the moment where, like, you know, dealing with, like, hard situations with um you know kids that are going through some rough times either you know at home or you know just personal demons so like I'm doing that at the moment so hopefully I can tick that off and yeah I would I'd love to be a, a teacher uh maybe down in the track after I finish or um still stay in the game of rugby league like you know um, working in the community at the club or um yeah maybe hopefully uh like my other cool thing I thought would be like being a scout so going out and scouting young talent I think that'd be a really cool job so yeah stuff like that are you a dog or a cat person love dogs bro dog. always love oh, I'm not I've never ever been a cat person eh? <laughs> uh, I don't mind cats bro but I'm just like dogs, 100% <laughs> oh that's the same question um would you ever think of coming home to the Warriors if an offer ever came um that's um I have thought about it yeah and um that's like my mum's um my mum would love me to come to the Warriors my whole family would I think so um yeah I have thought about it but at the moment I'm just really enjoying um living in Brisbane and playing for the Broncos and um yeah I'm just loving it here so I'm just taking it bit by bit really and yeah. no nah, it's been good uh your favorite beach um oh gee that's tough i probably i can't go past back home eh, raglan i can't go past i can't uh, i mean i can't beat the way like it's home it's home bro it, it's got the black sand but you know it's home <laughs> uh, favorite team to verse favorite what sorry favorite team to verse oh team Bro, probably the derby matches, bro, are gangster, eh? Like, like Cowboys and Titans. Like, those are the probably the meanest matches because, right. like, they always get the biggest crowds and, like, it's like bragging rights of Queensland. Like, who's the better team out of, uh, like, in Queensland? And, um, bro, those derby matches are pretty mean, bro. Like, when we played against Cowboys to win the – they call it a Forex Derby trophy. So, um, when we played them, we won it back. So, um, that was cool. So, and that was a massive turnout too. So, yeah, those derby matches are pretty mean. So, yeah, probably either Cowboys or Titans. Your favourite ice cream flavour? <laughs> Bro, cookies and cream, eh? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love some cookies and cream, G. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you had the choice of anyone in the world, who would you want to have dinner with? Oh. Far out. Bro, honestly, I would love to, bro, Barack Obama, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Bro, bro, because, like, I'm, I don't know if it's weird, bro, but I've always, I've, I've always been, like, real into, like, history. Like, I've, I'm, I'm, like, a history buff, bro. Like, I love history. Like, I love, like, like, you know, like, World War Two, One, Cold War, like, all that stuff. Like, I love that stuff. But I also love, like, um you know, like the stuff of, of Malcolm X and, and Martin Luther King, like, you know, all the like black history rights and all that sort of stuff. But 
I've always thought about it. I've always, always wanted to know. I'd love to know, like, like to sit down with Barack because he would have some inside knowledge, bro, like of some crazy shit. Like, and I would just be sitting there going, Fuck. and I've got so many questions I want to ask him, bro. Like, I reckon there's like a, like, you know how there's, there's a presidential book, how they've all been signing it. They, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it's true, but I've been reading some stuff. There's a presidential book and it's been passed down from the very first president all the way down. And I reckon there's some shit in there, bro, that I'm just like, What's I'd it? love to read. <laughs> oh, bro, like just some like out of it stuff. Like <laughs> I even reckon there's some stuff out there. Like you know, I've got fucking some crazy shit about aliens or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that stuff, bro. Just conspiracy theories and all that. Just oh, bro, I can sit and talk about it for ages. Oh, I, I'll make you into that shit too. The conspiracy. Bro, I love it. I love it. What do you reckon's going on there? What's that? We were fifty-one. Bro, 100% there's shit there. Like aliens, bro. We were talking about it the other day. We are honest to God talking about it the other day at dinner. I was like, bro, there must be this shit there, bro. There's shit there. Like if they don't want anyone there, like, what's that? I can't even see it on Google Maps. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. Like there's shit there. I know there is. There has to be. There has to be. And then like into the Pentagon, bro, there'll be some shit in there. Like there's some like, that's all like, fuck, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Are you a morning or night person? Uh, I'm I'm both, eh? I'm a bit of both. Like, I don't mind waking up early, like, real early and, and doing stuff if there's, like, stuff planned. But oh, I'm, I can do both very easily. So, um, but, like, I do like morning, actually. I do like waking up early and going down to the beach. I do enjoy that. Um, did you steal one of your mate's girls at the formal after party? Shake on it then, Wolvie. <laughs> nah i mean bro they weren't dating they weren't dating bro they weren't dating they they were mates they were mates that's gonna sound real bad but they were mates they were mates and they went together and i was at the after party <laughs> and I to, bro, yeah i was young bro. i was young i was young <laughs> um who is a who's a pest at the broncos oh bro there's a few, a eh? The biggest pit. Bro, Danny Levi. Danny Levi's a bit of a pest, bro. And um, Herbie Farnworth. Herbie Farnworth's a pest. But there's a few, a eh? But the biggest pest of all, like, was Andrew McCulloch. He was, fuck, he used to do, like, real, like, hardcore pranks, bro. Like, <laughs> tight all, like, um, did you see, like, Josh Edo Carr's story a while ago? How, oh, um, they tied all his rugby boots together and all that and pulled them out, bro. Like, like Andrew McCulloch, bro, used to do shit like that. Like, he would knot your boots, like, so tight, bro, that you can't untie it and you actually have to cut the laces and buy new laces for your boots. Like, he was like that, bro. He used to do, like, some shit like that and, like, hide your training clothes and that out of your bag. So, like, you used to just come out, bro, and you'd have to, like, do gym in your undies. Like, fuck, he used to just do shit like that. Yeah. Um. Fuck, people ask like, what's your body count and shit? <laughs> <laughs> what's your zero? <laughs> zero. What's your um favorite dinner meal? Oh, um let's, let's let's give you like a five to ten second um answer time limit and we'll just smash through the rest of them. Because yep. I know we we'll wanna want them answered. So yo. Favorite dinner meal. Steak and veg. Ooh, what's it like oh. to tackle Jason Tolmalolo? Hard, very hard. He's a he's strong, very hard. <laughs> Do you prefer the left edge over the right? Oh, I'm easy. Both, I'm easy, bro. Um, is the bro chipping away at anything outside of footy? Um, like my um, you know, um, apart from like the housework and and you know the counselling stuff, probably just those those two at the moment. So and just trying to enjoy life, yeah. Um, the fave your fave team growing up. Uh, I love the Rabbitohs. Eh? I was a massive. Um, I was a big Greg Inglis fan, but I also um love Sunny Bill too. But I was a big Rabbitohs fan, yeah. Um, hey bro, any tips on becoming a footy player? I'm 15. It's my second year playing. Did I start too late? Nah, you didn't start too late. It's never too late. Um, bro, honestly, if if it's your dream, bro, you know, like I was saying before, 
run your own race, bro, and, and just go out there and, and work your ass off and, 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 you know, good things will come. Um, if you could play with any league legend, who would it be? Darren Lockyer, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out to Hornby Panthers beating Linwood Keys. Kia's, yeah, Hornby Panthers, yeah. That's that was my um, that was my club growing up back home. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they beat um the Linwood Kia's um in the grand final. Hey. Oh, recently. Yeah, recently. Yeah, it was like two, three weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, if if they were gonna send the Maldives team to the World Cup, would you have gone? Yeah, I would have loved to put my hand. I already I already said in our group chat, like you know. We we got a group chat from the from the All Stars and um, people were joking around about it, saying who'd be keen, and I'd be like, bro, hundred percent. I put my hand up. Yeah. Um, what age did you move to Australia? And were you on your own? You've answered that. Yeah, seventeen, and yeah, yeah, I was on my own. Um, if you could play for another club, which one would it be? Oh, probably Melbourne, eh? Melbourne's got a mean system, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Big guns. Yeah, they are guns, yeah. Probably <laughs> Melbourne. Bro, there's the Crusaders a league, eh? Yeah, bro, 100%. 100%. Um, I'd love to play the, for the Crusaders too, actually. Yeah, that'd be guns. <laughs> cool to see yeah. you fit out for them. <laughs> bro, that'd be mean. Uh, get, uh, <laughs> someone asked you to sing a Wyata. <laughs> oh, far out. Bro, I'm useless at singing. It was a five second spiel. Um, what song? What song? What song? <laughs> um, Poco Rico. No. Do you ever want to play Super Rugby or All Blacks? Yep. Yep. That's still. Um, yeah, still love to, still love to. Maybe down the track later, but at the moment I'm just enjoying what I'm doing. But yeah, I would love to. Uh, can you follow us? Oh, can you follow us back? Um, <laughs> uh, what high school? No, you know that one too. Can you get another dub for the Warriors this weekend, please? Yo, yo, <laughs> we're about spoiling the party, hundred percent. <laughs> when his contract ends for the Broncos, will he extend with them or think about other clubs? Uh, uh, end of 2024 and, uh, yeah, just enjoying it at the moment. But, um, yeah, no, I love the club. It's a good club. Uh, mo most memorable moment other than your NRL debut? All-Stars, 100%. Playing All-Stars. Probably with Benji Marshall, too. Like, like watch. Yeah. And he, and, bro, he gave me... Um, my like the first try too of that game so yeah. um yeah just to get a try assist from him bro and you know being in camp with benji it was just like unreal bro i used to watch highlights of that fella 24 7 him and it was always benji and sunny bill williams so bro used to yeah it was just unreal i i remember when i first met him i was just i just i couldn't i didn't have anything to say i was just sort of gobsmacked so Bro, he's the yeah. goat of like our age group, eh? Like he was like, bro, hundred percent. Like, fuck, bro. I remember like Benji Marshall, bro. Like two thousand and five. Oh, bro. And like bloke in a bar, like he always posts up like funny shit about it. Like, yeah. Uh, two thousand and five Benji Marshall highlights. Fuck it, he cracks me <laughs> up, bro. Cracks me up, go because Benji's just and bro. Even now, bro, the bro's like 36, 37 and he's killing it. Still killing it, eh? Bro, he's a freak. Uh, yeah, he's the man. Um, yeah, and then there's heaps more about just like, bro, come come home to the Warriors. <laughs> when are you coming back to the Warriors? Um, will you marry me? <laughs> that sort of shit. Oh, right. um, but that's about it, G. Um, I could, we've gone on for a wee while, but I want to um, just thank you for, for your time, G. Thanks for hopping down and, and sharing a bit of your knowledge, bro, a bit of your story. Um, thank you, bro. Thanks for having me. Hey, we'll... Oh, well, well overdue, G. Well overdue. Ah, yeah, it was a. We've been teeing this one up for about a year and a half. <laughs> Bro, actual, actual. Nah, but happy to be here. Happy to, happy to have a yarn. Nah, it's cool to cool to find a bit of a time in your in your hectic schedule to um jump on and share some stories, Bro. So, um, nah, good from you, G.
Thanks, brother. Thank you, bro. Thank you.